Well, Roy, isn't it just about time that we kind of banked the embers on the campfire and got ready for your yarn about the old frontier days? <laughs> yes, I reckon it is, Vern. And I think that tonight we've got a story that is just a little bit different. Oh, really, Roy? What's the story about? Well, Pat, although not many people today know it, but during the early days of the West, it wasn't at all unusual to walk up to a ranch hand or a miner and ask him for a match and hear him say, uh, A match? Of course, my friend. I'm only too glad to oblige. You mean there were Russian cowboys in the West, Roy? I sure do, Pat. And although there weren't a lot of them, they contributed at least their share in the building of our frontier country. Oh, then tell me, did you ever know any of these, these Russian cowboys? And well, now, wait a minute. Look here, Pat. As long as I'm going to appear in the story, why not let Vern Smith get started telling the folks how this particular story came to take place? In the early days of the English feudal system, the ruthlessness of the barons caused Robin Hood to form his band of avengers who robbed the rich to help the poor. And so in the early days of the West, the growing injustices brought about by the ruthlessness of the cattle barons gave rise to more than a dozen frontier Robin Hoods, outlaws to the very rich, called friend by the very poor. One of the most colorful of these was a broad-shouldered blonde giant of a man whose name, virtually forgotten, was Boris Boradnovich. But in the rich valleys near the Black Hawk River, he's still remembered as the Russian kid. It was in the spring of 83 that a sudden wave of brutal lawlessness engulfed the entire Black Hawk Valley. Cattle were stolen, ranch houses burned, men wantonly shot down. Toward sunset, one April afternoon, two men were seen to occupy a table near the rear of a crowded local cafe. Now, now look, Fink, I guess I know what I saw. Yeah, the trouble with you, Jingo, is that you're scared of your own shadow. Why, the Russian kid would no more come to this town after what's been happening lately than, than to go out and shoot himself. Yeah, well, I think that's why he's coming to town. I think he's got wise that we've been pulling these raids and blaming it on him. Yeah, well, let me tell you something, Jingo. If the Russian kid does show his face around here, I'll Excuse personally... Excuse me, Mr. What the... You look like a man who might help me. Yeah? What do you think I can do to help you? I'm looking for a man they call Fink. You know him, maybe? Yeah, maybe I do. What's it to you? Well, if you are a friend of this uh, hyena, maybe you tell him for me they come to town to kill him. Why, you sneaking low dog? That, my friend, would be a big mistake on for your gun. Because if you even have one good eye in that ugly face of yours, you can see already got you covered. Maybe you got the boss covered, but you haven't got me. <laughs> hey, what is going on here? Who shot that gun out of this polecat's hand? I did, mister. And since I'm right behind you, you'd better drop that pop gun of yours. And quick. Well? That's better. Thanks, brother. You sure saved my life. I wasn't interested in saving your life. I'm interested in only one thing. One thing, eh? <laughs> this is stick up. You want money? No, I came here looking for you. And now that I've got you, I'm taking you right along with me. Hey, who are you anyhow? Here, look at this. You can see for yourself. Hey, what the blaze? A private detective for the New Mexico Cattlemen's Association. Well, what are you doing here? You got no authority in this state. That's where you're wrong. I got six laws on my side, and each one of them is covered with lead. Besides that, you seem a little upset for a man whose life I just saved. Yeah. Well, we've got our own laws down here. Sorry, but... mister. I'm taking the Russian kid with me. Come on. Whoa! Good eye! Say, what's the idea, Boris? You mind maybe if we stop near these boulders so I can light my cigarette? No, but don't waste any time. Yeah, I just take a match and strike it. <laughs> there we are, Boris. Hold it there, Mister. I got the cup. Hey, Whitey, quick, get his gun. All right, friend, just drop it. Come on. Well, there you are, but still I can't figure just what happened. Are these your men? Uh, yes, they're the famous band of the Russian kid. <laughs> you do not think I ride into town without making preparations for all kinds of trouble? <laughs> oh, no. Always they wait right here for me. When I light the match, that's the signal. Oh, I'll be jiggered. Rode myself right into a trap. Oh, you must not feel so bad. You're a good detective. Only thing is, Russian kid smarter from you. Well, what's the next move, and who's making it? Next move, I'm sorry to say, I make. I must take you back to our little cabin and... 
beautiful in that village, but you look something like a kitchen sieve. Well, that's just great. Oh, do not be distressed, my friend. We give you a very, very beautiful grave. <laughs> Here we are, right by this chair and table. I suppose there's no use in my saying anything. Well, what could you say? You say something which makes me mad, then I lose my temper and kill you too quick. You say something that makes me feel sorry, then all day after your funeral I feel very, very bad. <laughs> no, no, it is best you only tell me just how you like to go. Okay, what's the choice? Well, first there is the knife. Knife is maybe a little slow, but knife is quiet. Then I get rope, rifle... Even maybe she should want it, I get here some poison. No, thanks. I'll take it the fast way. Use your gun. Oh, my friend, you're truly a man of great courage. More courage than I ever found in a man before. I tell you what I do for you. Yes? I give you back your own gun. Give me back my gun? What for? You see, clock on wall. In one minute, that clock strike eight o'clock. Yeah? Well, I put your gun and my gun here on the table between us, so... Then when the clock start to strike the first stroke of eight, we both go for our guns. Then when I kill you, I feel I give you a sporting chance. Is that all right from you? That's one offer I can't afford to refuse. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> we make a game out of killing you. That's why it is fun for us both, maybe, eh? Ah, look. There's only a few seconds left now until the clock start to strike. You are ready? I'm ready. First sound of the striker, we both go for guns. Now let us wait. Uh, what happened? What did you do? Nothing much. I just beat you to the draw. Shot your gun out of your hand. You can shoot no better than to shoot the gun out of my hand. I thought that was pretty good shooting. You see, I aim for your hand. I do not aim for your hand. I aim straight for your heart. Well, maybe that was because it, uh, you're afraid of me. I wasn't afraid of you. Oh, no, I insist. You have shells left. You must shoot me. Sorry, I can't oblige, but instead, why don't we just save our shooting for those that need it? Eh? What's that? Well, well, who do you mean need shooting? Well, maybe Fink and his cutthroats. But until we can prove it, let's just say the men who have been robbing this valley blind and putting the blame on you. Wait, you mean you do not believe I've been making all these raids around Black Hook? Not only that... But I know, and I think you know, who has been making them. But, but then why you arrest me for cattle stealing? Why you take me away from the cafe? Let's say it was to save your life. The Russian kid is as good as a whole posse of sheriffs in a valley like this, where there's big ranchers who are beating down the poor. You see, Boris, I'm not a cattle association detective after all. No? Then who are you? I'm a special United States marshal sent down here to straighten things out. Ah, then you arrest me anyhow. Far from it. I sent to Los Alamos to, uh, for some deputies. When they get here, I think we'll have the goods on Fink and his gang. But me? What about me? Well, we reckon to leave you here, Boris. We figure that if you're around, you'll see that justice is done. Well, the time has come again to say it's been very nice having you with us. And now that you know the way, why not drop in again? Yes, sir, we'll all be back again next Tuesday. So until next week when we'll all be looking for you, this is Roy Rogers saying goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. Don't forget, smiles are made out of the sunshine and a frown from a rainy day. You'll be more than repaid if you remember that a smile goes a long, long way. Roy Rogers, Bob Nolan, and the Sons of the Pioneers appeared through the courtesy of Republic Pictures. Now this is Vern Smith saying good night for Goodyear, the greatest name in rubber, and reminding you that more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other kind. Tune in again next Tuesday at this same time when Goodyear will bring you another get-together with Bob Nolan and the Sons of the Pioneers, Miss Pat Friday, the Farr Brothers, Perry Butkin's Orchestra, and starring the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs>
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.